This video will cover distance, midpoint, and circles. So we'll start out with the midpoint formula. Midpoint is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be the point that is right smack in the middle between two coordinates. So all we have to do is take the average of the x values, comma, the average of the y values. So if I want to do the midpoint of this, here's my x, here's my y. If it helps you, you can label this as x1, y1, and this one is x2, y2 because all the subscripts refer to is just the first point, the second point. You have seen these subscripts before when you did slope. So I just have to do negative 6 plus 2 over 2, comma, 3 plus 1 over 2. It is an ordered pair, needs to be in parentheses, do your arithmetic. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, divided by 2 is negative 2, and 3 plus 1 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. If we took the time to graph these, you would see on a graph that this point is right in the middle of that segment. Another example, same set, we're going to do 4 plus 1 over 2, and we will do negative 8 plus 6 over 2. It may be a good idea for you to label these like I did on the first one, because a common mistake is for people to put these two together and they don't go together. It's the x's that go together. So with labeling these, that might help you keep straight what goes with what. This one just shows that not everything comes out even. 4 plus 1 is 5 over 2 is 5 halves. You can leave it as an improper fraction. If you'd rather go to the decimal or the mixed number, that's fine. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Divided by 2 is negative 1. The distance formula is a little bit more involved. It still has subscripts. The distance is the square root of the difference between the x values squared plus the difference between the y values squared. So we're going to find the distance between the points, and we're going to give our answer in two forms. We're going to give it as a simplified radical, and we're also going to give it as a decimal rounded to two places. And of course, that's just a matter of using your calculator. So I can do what I did a second ago with these. Let's label this as x1, y1, x2, y2, and then just plug in distance equals big old square root of x1, which is negative 1, minus x2, which is 3, quantity squared, plus parentheses, y1, which is 4, minus negative 2 squared. Now, notice it really doesn't matter on this, the order. This is the way the formula is written, but it easily could have been x1 minus x2 squared. The order doesn't matter because you're going to square, which is going to turn it positive. So I just happen to work my way this way. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Squared is a positive 16. 4 minus a negative 2, change that to plus plus. That's 6 squared is 36, which gives us the square root of 52. If you do your factor tree on 52, you should come up with 2 times the square root of 13 as your simplified radical. This is going to be 7.21 rounded to two decimal places. Let me just go back and say again, I chose to do it this direction. If we had come back the other direction on this, this would have been 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 2 minus 4 squared. 3 minus negative 1 is a positive 4 squared is 16. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 squared is positive 36. So it doesn't matter what direction you work in. It's like slope, you could go either direction. All right, working the same thing. Distance is square root of parentheses 4 minus 7 squared plus parentheses 7 minus 11 squared. 4 minus 7 is negative 3 squared is positive 9. 7 minus 4 is negative 4 squared is a positive 16. If we add this up, we're looking at the square root of 25 which comes out nice and neat as 5. So that's your answer for both. That is your simplified radical, per se. There is no radical, and that is your simplified decimal. Circles are a little bit more involved than the distance and the midpoint formula. Definition, circle is a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. And the fixed distance from the circle's center is called the radius. So let's skip down to the picture for a second just to get the definition straight. Here's our center. And the circle is all of the points that are a fixed distance away from the center. And that fixed distance away from the center is the radius. Now your standard form of a circle is this. x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. 
From this information, we can name the center and the radius. You should remember slope-intercept form of a line. When you had an equation in that form, it was very easy to name the slope and the y-intercept. It's the same concept here. When it's in this form, it's very easy to name the center and the radius. What we do here is just change the sign. That's minus h, and that's why that becomes h. That's minus k, and that's why that becomes k. Your radius is r, not r squared. You have to take the square root of that r to figure out your radius. The standard form, all I have to do is pull these numbers out. The center is 3, not negative 3, 3 because I'm changing the sign. Change that sign is 2. The radius is the square root of that 9, which is 3. In this case, that square root came out even. Sometimes it doesn't, and you have to simplify the radical or use a calculator for the decimal. To get a decent little graph of this, I just go over 3 and up 2 and put my dot for the center. And then I'm going to count this radius of 3 in these directions. I'm going to go 3 over, 3 up, 3 over this way, 3 down this way, and then do my best to try to sketch a circle. Very hard for me to do with this little tool. So it's supposed to be a circle, not a square or something. x squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 16. In this case, there are no parentheses around the x. That means the center is 0 comma something. Also, this says y plus 4, so change that sign and we get negative 4. Take the square root of 16 and we have 4. So we have a center of 0, negative 4. Count 4 in every direction, 4 up, 4 this way, 4 this way, 4 down, and then try to sketch your circle, and that's that. Center on this one, change the sign as 5, change the sign as 1. The radius is the square root of 27. Now, two things you have to do. I'm going to want the exact answer, which is 3 radical 3, and we get that by doing a factor tree on 27. You know, 27 goes to 9 and 3. Here's your pair of 3, so it's 3 radical 3. That's the exact value for the radius. But you can't graph 3 radical 3 over here. What you want to do is use your calculator on the square root of 27 and just round that off to the uh, tenths place because you're not going to be able to graph it very accurately anyway. So over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. I'm going to go a smidge more than 5 this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a bit. Kind of hard to do over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit. Connect the dots up, and that's supposed to be a circle. This one, there's no parentheses with x or y. That makes the center very simple. It's just 0, 0. The radius is the square root of 20, which simplifies out to 2 times the square root of 5 as far as your radical goes, but your Calculator says the square root of 20 is about 4.5. So we will start at 0, 0 and count 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. And a half. I count for enough. 1, 2, 3, four. yeah. Connect your dots. And there's your circle. Sort of. You get the idea. Previous examples were all in standard form, which made them very easy to name the center and the radius, but oftentimes the equation is not in standard form. If it's not in standard form, you must complete the square to put it in standard form. So that's what, a form, that's what an equation might look like to start with. I need to organize it to get ready to complete the square. There's x squared and there's y squared, so I need to organize for both. And here's the setup. Get your x stuff together. Put plus blank. We'll talk about that blank in a second. Put your y stuff together. That's here and here. Put a plus blank. Take the plain old number and add 20 to both sides, which effectively just moves the 20 to the other side. Now, your process for completing the square is pretty simple. You just take half of that middle number, half of 16 is 8, and you square it to 64. Add 64 to this side also. Do it right then so remember. That's why I put plus blank blank over here. On this one, half of 22 is 11. 11 squared is 121. Add the 121 into this blank. That same line just typed up more neatly, so we can go on and look at the factoring. This factors as x plus 8 squared because the number that squares to give you 64 is 8. When you add 8 and 8, you get 16. The number that squares to give you 121 is 11, and when you add 11 and 11, you get 22.
equals 205. If you just do this arithmetic, you get 205. Now it's in the correct form. All we have to do is pull out our 8 and 11 for our center. Remember, change the sign. That was 8. It becomes negative 8. Change that sign. It becomes positive 11. And the square root of 205 is your radius. It doesn't simplify out radical-wise, but when you use your calculator, you get 14.32. There's more completing the square on the next video entitled Circles Completing the Square.